Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Smart Coach Videos. In today's episode, we are going to talk specifically about the early attempts by Gandhi at Satyagraha in India. Okay, So these attempts come in the form of, see, Champaran, then we have got Ahmedabad, and we have got Kheda. All right, and then we will also look into the Rolat Satyagraha. Okay. Now, things to remember before we go into Champaran, Ahmedabad, Khera, Rolat Satyagraha. Let us look at the dates. Champaran, nineteen seventeen. Ahmedabad, nineteen eighteen. Khera, nineteen eighteen. And Rolat Satyagraha, nineteen nineteen. However, even before these dates, one date we have to remember is the date of 1915. It is on the date of 1915 that Gandhi returns from South Africa, okay, South Africa to India, all right. And from 1915 uh, uh, itself, he begins his constructive work or he begins his work into forming an alliance with a political party who would submit to his ideas of Satyagraha, who would submit to his ideas of passive resistance and non-cooperation. Okay? So, from 1915 itself, Gandhi begins to make political headways and uh, you see his first experimentations take part in this phase. Okay? And then he would lo launch the larger experiment of non-cooperation during the non-cooperation movement along with the uh, you see, by allying with the Khilafat and the Congress. Okay, so now let us proceed. As far as the return from 1915 is concerned, it is based heavily upon the Gandhi's uh, upon Gandhi's success in South Africa. Okay, Gandhi had already signed a deal with the British uh, with the government of South Africa, with the South African government and General Smuts. Okay, the Gandhi Smuts Agreement, which is known as okay, Gandhi Smuts Agreement, according to which you see certain concessions had been given to the Indian residents of South Africa such as you see concessions of uh, registration he was fighting against the registration policy of the government that Indians had to register themselves and had to carry the registration papers at all times he was fighting this and then the marriage act okay according to which uh, those marriages which were not conducted uh, in uh, the Christian rights along with the uh, conducted around Christian rights will not be recognized as legal marriages okay he was fighting against registration the marriage act and along with that he was also uh, fighting against the immigration laws okay immigration laws for Indians all right this was also another important part uh, and then along with that he was also fighting against the racism and you see the, the poll tax sorry previous uh, to that we will also have to discuss the poll tax okay tax which was collected from the indentured labor of south africa the indian indentured laborers of south africa okay the poll tax he was fighting against that and he was also launching a generalized fight against racism in south africa and okay and uh, you see uh he's uh, the uh, the deal between Smuts and Gandhi which was signed it was seen as a great victory and that's why he was invited to India okay and he was invited to give the freedom movement in India a new direction and he came back to India and we see that the direction that he is given uh, from the uh, Champaran uh, you see Satyagraha okay so what is Satyagraha of course Satyagraha is a non-violent movement it literally it means uh, you see uh, the search for truth okay and uh, you see it is a non-violent movement and through this non-violent movement of non-cooperation and sometimes even civil disobedience non-cooperation and civil disobedience are two different things okay in a non-cooperation movement you stop cooperating with the government but in civil disobedience it is a more proactive form of non-cooperation in which along with not cooperating with the government that is not uh, working with the government which is ruling you in civil disobedience you also court arrest by defying the laws of the government okay civil disobedience that is you are disobeying the laws of the uh, government okay and by defying the government you also court uh, you see uh, court punishment and by doing both of these things what you are trying to do is you are trying to undermine the hegemony of the government which is ruling you so these uh, ideas were deployed in the form of Champaran, Ahmedabad and Khera let us look at Champaran first of all okay as far as Champaran is concerned it is born out of the the grievances of the uh, people of Champaran was born out of the Tin Kathia system okay Tin Kathia system now the Teen Kathia system was a system in which you see up uh, you see uh, 
a peasant was asked to cultivate indigo okay peasant was asked to cultivate indigo in the 320th 3 by 20th part of his land okay so uh, suppose uh, you own uh, 100 hectares of land so you would be asked to cultivate indigo in 30 hectares okay and this proved to be an oppressive measure okay this measure was pro uh, placed it was placed by the planters okay the british planters and it proved to be very oppressive towards Indian and the situation was uh, Indian peasants and the situation was exacerbated by the uh, fact that did the, in the late uh, 19th century, in the late 19th century, Germany had already invented synthetic, synthetic dyes, okay. And because of the invention of synthetic dyes, the demand for Indian in indigo, it had decreased. And therefore, the planters, in order to maximize their profits, they started collecting illegal taxes, okay. And they started enforcing uh, illegal taxes upon the peasants in order, uh, those peasants who were demanding to get out of the system, uh, they would have to uh, submit illegal taxes to the planters. And this system was wholly resented by the, uh, by the individual peasants, okay. And therefore... Gandhi was invited to lead a movement in the Champaran district, okay. Gandhi was invited to lead a movement in the Champaran uh, district by Rajkumar Sukla. And see, uh, after Gandhi arrived, what he did was he started a non-cooperation movement within Champaran. And uh, it was a non-violent movement, non-violent, non-cooperation movement, okay. And through this movement, he demanded from the government that the teen Katia system should be abolished and that the presence should be given respite from the teen Katia system, okay. Although the government did not agree uh, with the, uh, the, uh, they did agree with the uh, abolition of the teen Katia system, what we see that the entire amount of money uh, or entire amount of uh, illegal taxes which were collected from the peasants it was not given back to the peasants but only a percentage of it was given back to the peasants the percentage that was returned to the peasants was 25 percent okay and all of this was done after the committee of inquiry was formed of which was headed by okay the committee of inquiry into the Tinkatia system or the champaran whatever was happening in champaran was headed by gandhi himself okay all right and so uh, this was seen as the first victory of gandhi in india although the entire amount of money illegal taxes that were collected from the peasants was not returned at least 25 percent of it was returned okay and this was done in order to have an easy uh, you see you can also call it uh, you can also see look at it in such a way that this was done in order to achieve a victory because if uh, the entire amount was uh, uh, because if the entire amount were asked okay uh, there was a doubt if the government would uh, allow the entire amount of money that had been uh, you see uh, taken by the planters to be returned okay so some kind of negotiation skills also we are able to see during the champaran movement 25% was of course returned and gandhi uh, uh, this was done after an inquiry was uh, held into the tin kathia system and gandhi himself was the uh, gandhi himself chaired or led the uh, inquiry committee okay and in this venture in gandhi's venture into uh, champaran there are some important names that are associated with gandhi at that point of time and we also have to remember these names because they are important from an mcq perspective so here we have jb kriplani okay we also have mazar ul haq all right and most important, importantly, we have Rajendra Prasad. So, together, uh, these people were able to, okay, together with Gandhi, they were able to, uh, you see, get the Teen Katia system abolished in Champaran. Now, from Champaran, we proceed into the Ahmedabad Mill Strike, okay. Ahmedabad Mill Strike. And the event is of 1980. Okay, here in Ahmedabad Mill, okay, all right, the owners had stopped the plague bonus. Okay, they had discontinued the plague bonus, and the workers started demanding the bonus. Okay, and 
Gandhi came at the scene, came into the scene and you see started negotiating uh, on behalf of the workers. Okay, he started negotiating with the owners on behalf of the workers. And what he suggested was that the workers asked for 35% increase in wages. Okay. 35% increase in wages. However, the owners were only able, uh, owners were only willing to concede 20% of the plague bonus. Now, forget about wages or increase in wages. The owners were not, you see, the plague bonus had already been discontinued and the owners were only willing to give 20% of the plague bonus and there are no increase in wages. And therefore, the Gandhi asked them to, you see, form a strike, okay? And Gandhi himself went into a fast unto death, okay? And this is the first instant, I instance in India in which Gandhi tried this political tactic of fasting okay fasting which had uh, which had previously been a religious uh, you see a part of religious tradition of hinduism he brought it to the political forum and for the first time he applied the technique of fast okay fasting as a political tool and this according to gandhi would break the resolve of the uh, enemy and make the enemy more pliable and this did happen because the uh, owners of the Ahmedabad mill they did relent and they gave the 35% increase in wages. So this was even a more resounding victory than that of the uh, Champaran. Okay? And after this uh, victory uh, at uh, Ahmedabad, we see that Gandhi moved on to Khera. Okay? And this event comes in 1918. Okay? Khera. And out here, uh, this uh, the discontentment among the peasants was brought up because of the fact that the rains had failed and it was a situation of famine which had been created at Khera district of Gujarat. Okay? Khera of Khera district of Gujarat. All right. And the government regulation was that once the crops fall to one fourth of total produce, once uh, the crops fall to just uh, below one fourth of the total produce, the and uh, you see the peasants were uh, eligible for remission. Okay. So, uh, suppose uh, you were uh, about to produce 100 kilograms, uh, I'm just giving you an example. So, your land was about to produce 100 kilograms of wheat, but the production fell uh, lower, uh, as low as one fourth. So, you in according to the extent, uh, uh, extent laws, you are eligible for remission and this was not followed by the British government and therefore Gandhi here also, he launched a program of Satyagraha, okay. Here too, Satyagraha was launched all right and you see although the government did not relent in this case but a secret order was passed okay although there was no public response by the government okay publicly they still uh, you see uh, they would not relent but there was a secret or uh, uh, you see order passed by government in this instance that you see only those who are able to pay only those peasants who are able to pay are going to pay the taxes for that particular year okay not all peasants those peasants who are able to pay only from them taxes would be collected okay this uh, you see Khera in Khera we see that no rent movement movement was used okay no rent movement was used as a political tool that the uh, payment of rent or payment of taxes to the government or rent on land to the government was uh, used okay non-payment of rent was used as a political tool okay and the government had to relent although not publicly but at least in the secret uh, secretly an ordinance was passed as by uh, whereby you see they were uh, the, the the officials were asked that only those peasants who can could pay should pay the taxes for that particular year and in this movement in the Khera movement, we see that for the first time, Vallabhai Patel was exposed. Vallabhai Patel was exposed to the Gandhian form of Satyagraha, okay, or the Gandhian form of uh, conf uh, confronting the British government in India. And therefore, we see that from the Khera movement itself, we see that Vallabhai Patel becomes a associate of Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, so these were the three, uh, uh, these were the three important movements with, in which Gandhi took part 
uh, after he returned from uh, South Africa and these three were very important during the formative phase of Gandhi's political career in India because in these uh, three movements what we see is that the tools which Gandhi is going to deploy uh, during the successive stages of the national movement in India, the tools were tried out in these three uh, very important uh, uh, movements, okay, the, uh, the tool of uh, non-cooperation, okay, and civil disobedience, the tool of fasting and the tool of no rent movement, all of these things uh, were used by Gandhi uh, as per, you see, uh, to develop his political strategy against the British in India and then we go on from here okay from the uh, from the Champaran and from uh, Ahmedabad mill strike and from Khera we go on to the Rolat Satyagraha which was you see although these movements were important these movements were vict uh, victorious these movements were important but from there on we have to go on a mass based movement okay and the first mass based movement which we see under Gandhi is that of the Rolat Satyagraha it was an all India movement because we see that the movement had spread to uh, parts uh, of uh, northern India uh, most parts of northern India okay it was a generalized hurtal for all over India okay so we will discuss the Rolat Satyagraha now and let us look at how Gandhi tried to bring in mass participation now okay now let us look into the Rolat Satyagraha okay the Rolat Act also is known as the you see sorry anarchic anarchic and revolutionary Mary crimes act and the Rollat, uh, you see, Rollat Satyagraha was motivated towards certain uh, prescriptions of the Anarchic and Revolutionary Crimes Act. It is known as Rollat Act because Sir Sidney Rollat, Sir Sidney Rollat was the head of the committee which had proposed uh, this uh, this particular bill okay the head of the committee which had proposed the uh, anarchic and revolutionary crimes act and therefore it is known as the rollat act okay and a feature of the rollat act was that you see a very important uh, element of all uh, democratic governments okay or all modern governments is that uh, you see uh, imprisonment imprisonment can happen only after trial right but this provision of trial before imprisonment okay of being brought to a magistrate at least and being heard okay this could be short circuited by using the anarchical and revolutionary crimes act okay is it could lead to imprisonment without trial and this particular feature of the Rollat act okay which was introduced in order to counter the revolutionary activi act, uh, activities of the revolutionary terrorists this particular feature came under attack okay during the Rollat satyagraha okay and the Rollat satyagraha was a mass based satyagraha and it was a uh, all india or pan india satyagraha okay and parts of bengal gujarat and you see most importantly punjab so serious okay serious agitations during the rolat satyagraha okay there was an all uh, india hartal which was proclaimed in the april 6th of april okay and you see it was proclaimed by Gandhi and this hartal was uh, uh, you see uh, this hartal was observed okay however in these areas of Bengal, Gujarat and Punjab we see that the movement which was essentially a non-violent movement okay it was conceived of as non-violent by Gandhi okay and this essentially non-violent movement became very violent okay and this, uh, you see, was the first instance in which Gandhi was forced to reckon with the fact that uh, control over the masses is not a very easy thing to have, okay. Although the prescriptions were for non-violence, okay, we see that in Punjab especially, okay, the movement became very violent, okay. The movement became very violent and there were serious repercussions to this movement. In Punjab, we see that martial law was declared. Martial law was declared by the Lieutenant Governor of Punjab, General O'Doyer, okay, Michael O'Doyer. Lieutenant Governor of Punjab, Michael O'Doyer, he had uh, declared uh, martial law in Punjab and he had deputized General Dyer, okay, 
to impose the martial law. Okay, General Dyer was asked by Michael O'Dyer to uh, impose the martial law, and oh, we know what was the consequence. The consequence was that on the Baisakhi, 13th of April, okay, April on Baisakhi, we see that people had gathered at the Jaliawala Bagh, okay, all right, and the massacre took place at Jaliawala Bagh. Of course, we have a video, separate video, which is devoted to the massacre of Jaliawala Bagh. Uh, you can look into it for further details, but we, uh, in this video, uh, uh, what I can be specified is that on the 13th of uh, 13th of April, that is Baisakhi, people had gathered in Jaliawala Bagh to protest against the imposition of martial law and against the uh, arrest of popular leaders such as Saifuddin Kichlu. Okay. They were there to uh, they were there to protest the imposition of uh, of uh, you see uh, the repression uh, which was uh, imposed by the British government and they were there to protest the arrest of popular leaders such as Saifuddin Kichlu and these people who had peacefully gathered there and who were just protesting the activities of government peacefully they were shot upon by the uh, by the contingent commanded by General Dyer okay and we see that this uh, act by General Dyer also met with approval in the British House of Lords all right. So, this was, we can see the repression was quite organized and quite uh, sanctioned, okay. It was a sanctioned and organized repression from the British government, okay. And this had come uh, in consequence of the violence which was perpetrated, okay, during the Rolat Satyagraha. Because as we already talked about, the Rolat Satyagraha could not remain a non-violent movement, but indeed certain, uh, you see, uh, Europeans had also been killed during the protest of the Rolat Satyagraha. It had become uh, very violent in Punjab, okay, and therefore in Punjab we see the greatest uh, uh, repression coming in the form of the uh, massacre during the, uh, uh, the uh, in Jaliawala Bagh, okay. Out here we also see that Ravindranath Tagore had, uh, you see, uh, refused to accept the knighthood because as, uh, you see, as a protest against the massacre of Jaliawala Bagh, okay. And Gandhi keeping in view that it had become, uh, you see, uh, the Rolat Satyagraha had become very violent, he cancelled the Rolat Satyagraha, okay. He suspended the Rolat Satyagraha and they, from there on, the realization was made that more constructive work constructive work was necessary okay more constructive work in the uh, in the sense that people are to be made aware in the modalities of satyagraha okay in the modalities of non violent non cooperation and non violent civil disobedience how to proceed with them okay how not to become violent or even the leaders their grip uh, uh, you see on the popular masses it had to be analyzed okay and for that uh, there uh, you see the uh, the leadership should take some time off However, we see that right after the Rolat Satyagraha, there was also the launching of the Khilafat and the non-cooperation movement. We see that, uh, you see, uh, we see that the leadership, although they were aware of the lessons of Rolat Satyagraha, they did not pay much attention to that. And therefore, the culmination is seen in the Chori Chora incident, which happened uh, at the close of the non-cooperation, at the closing of the non-cooperation movement. Okay, Such violences, uh, instances of violences prompted Gandhi to suspend the non-cooperation movement also. Okay, And therefore, uh, you see, adequate... Uh, importance was played to uh, paid to constructive work and therefore we see that by the start of the civil disobedience movement congress had done uh, the indian national congress had done quite a bit of constructive work at the grassroots level and therefore the civil disobedience movement stayed largely within the ambit of uh, no, of non violence okay however the rolat satyagraha and the non cooperation movement had deviated from them so i hope uh, the first few instances of gandhi's uh, implementation of the ideals of satyagraha that is champaran ahmedabad khera and rolat satyagraha are uh, you see quite uh, clear to you by now i hope uh, you had a good time i hope you'll be studying hard thank you